Okay, talking about regenerating the woman. Verse 45 says, I shall listen when in their prayers they tell me, my father, do not see my sin, see only my pain. Do not judge my ingratitude, but see my suffering. Hey y'all, Coach Number Five here, guys. Stacy with me. Hello. What are we talking about, Stacy? We're talking about the blood and the curses on Adam and Eve. What chapter is that? I'm trying to go. I'm trying to find which one it is. Mm, the time of curses is given is Genesis 8. So he cursed the ground. So the ground is cursed. Adam ain't cursed. Okay, unto the woman, he said, this is Genesis 3.16. Like John 3.16. The Genesis 3.16 says, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So that's what we're saying. It's actually the last one. But... The woman has to bear the children. That's the curse. That's the curse of Eve. Because before that, in verse 15, he's talking about the snake. And the Lord said unto the serpent there in verse 14. In verse 15, he's talking about the snake. And in verse 17, he's talking about the um, Adam. So the only curses y'all have is in 16. And so yeah, the curse right there is childbirth. Because with childbirth comes a menstrual cycle and blood. I don't understand why you say menstrual cycle has, has to do with childbirth. I don't say what I don't see because the menstrual cycle is actually stopped. What are you, are you saying that it has some? It has you have to have a cycle to birth a child. But why are you saying that it has something to do with Adam, the menstrual cycle? Because Adam is cursed every time she is disobedient in her menstrual cycle. His whole house is unclean and defiled. His bed is defiled. Every chair is defiled. It's like a man with diarrhea who, you know, don't, you know, adhere to the biblical principles. He just does, you know, as he wills. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. So that desire part, he changed that about her too. So desire with other places then. And so because he had to put skins on them and turn them into humans, bring them down to the third dimension, she now has to bear the children. And with that comes a menstrual cycle, absolutely. That's part of it. And in the menstrual cycle, she has this blood that she has to be responsible for. And the thing is, women, well, I'm sorry to say it, women, you will not, well, the, the only thing that you will fight for more than idolatry is the right to care less about the responsibilities associated with your menstrual cycle. I'm talking about Leviticus chapter 15. Here we are where I wanted to be, and that's in verse 41 of chapter 33. Now, what it says is, truly I tell you that the regeneration of humanity must begin with the women, so that their fruit, which are the men of tomorrow, are found free of the stains that have led them to degeneration. 
Okay, now this is some important stuff. This is an important message, I believe, for our mothers, sisters, daughters, you know, for the women of the world, is that the regeneration of humanity basically falls on you guys. Now, um, recognizing that our men folk have let us down as far as humanity has concerned, you know, we dropped the ball way back long time ago. Our forefathers stepped away from the scripture and decided to take on Babylonian and Egyptian cultural uh, norms, and we're still doing that today. Well, as we know, all of that kind of um, um, paganism and idolatry and uh, even the economic systems of the world are going away and you know the world will be completely different um, in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven is going to be more about our father his laws and his rules well you can imagine there's going to be a huge transition taking place there and we can see from this verse 41 that it's going to start with the women it's going to start with our wives and, you know, our daughters are going to be the ones who actually start this regeneration. This is some important stuff. And you say, well, how are they going to do this? It's through child rearing. Start, they'll start raising their sons, as you can see right there where it says that their fruit, which are the men of tomorrow. So it is these women that's actually going to start raising the men children a little bit differently than they're raising them right now. Um, we were having a discussion in our family yesterday about Willie Lynch. And, you know, if you really understand Willie Lynch and uh, if you could get a grasp on that message, you'll see how it is that our women who once they start raising, you know, the little boys a little bit differently will, you know, have a great impact on humanity, actually start this regeneration process. You know, once they start raising these boys in a godly manner, they start raising their man children to follow the laws of the Bible, to, you know, obey the covenant, to uh, start keeping the feasts and stuff like that. You can imagine the impact that this is going to have. And may our father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.